ever wanted to build a 3D website that looks like it came straight out of awards, you are in the right place. Today, we are rebuilding a production-ready Adidas 3D landing page, combining cutting-edge visuals with professional software architectures. Here's what we will create together. A central 3D studio model with clickable interactive products. Three immersive product pages, each with its own unique environment. From a clean white studio to an urban sports scene. Cinematic scroll-triggered animation that respond to every interaction. And a complete UI layer, headers, footers, and polished loading states. But this isn't just another tutorial. This is a masterclass in how professional team build scalable, maintainable 3D experiences. And yes, all the 3D models that we are using are completely free. You will find the download link right in the description. We will focus on the essential 20% of React knowledge that drives 80% of real-world projects. Patterns and technique you can take straight to any dev team. By the end, you will not only have a stunning Adidas landing page for your portfolio, you will have the confidence to build production-grade 3D apps on your own. So let's dive in and build something extraordinary. All right, first thing first, we need to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this the Vards dash Adidas. Now let's open this up in our VS Code. Perfect. Now you can see an empty project right over here. So first step that we got to take is install React. But we are not going to install the raw React. We are going to use Next.js. You can also click on the Get a Starter button. But for simplicity, they actually provided the command line right over here. So you just click Copy and go to the VS Code and open up the terminal and paste that command right over here. And let's hit Enter. For the project name, I'm going to say dot slash in order to use this current repository. So let's hit Enter. So in order to make our code type safe, we're going to use TypeScript. So let's hit Yes. I'm going to use ESLint. For styling our classes, we're going to use Tailwind CSS. We are not going to use source directory. We're going to say no. We're going to use app router. Yes. We're going to also use Turbo Pack. And for import alias, we're going to say yes. I'm going to say use at sign slash star. All right. Now, in order to see whether our project has configured properly, we're going to run this command. npm run dev. And let's click on the HTTP localhost 3000 and just wait a minute. And here we go. Now, everything is working perfectly. So in order to use this beautiful hero section, which is mainly focused on 3D stuff, let me teach you how 3JS works. So before I teach you, we got to install some of the packages. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new terminal and run npm install 3. And then we're going to use at react-3 slash fiber. So at some react 3 fibers allows us to use 3JS inside React by adding related components instead of writing a bunch of code from scratch to run a simple scene. And then we also install Aston React slash 3 slash Dre. So this one contains helpers that fulfills the React 3 fibers. And let's hit enter. Now I know React 3 fibers and Dre might sound intimidating if you have never used them before. But trust me, they make 3D in React incredibly simple. Let's spend just a few minutes breaking down the absolute basics. This will demystify everything you're about to see. First and foremost, think of a 3D scene like a movie set. You need just three things. One, a scene, which is the stage or the world itself. Two, a camera, which is the point of view we are looking from. And three, we need something to look at, like a mesh, which is any 3D object. React 3 Fiber gives us React components for all of these. So let me show you. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it components. So inside the components, I'll create a new file. I'm going to call it test.tsx. And then in here, I'm going to run refce. Refce is a React snippet that actually allows us to create React component. So if I hit enter, you can see that a React component has been created for us. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this div with canvas from React 3 Fiber. All right. So remember, we have three things, a scene and a camera. By creating a canvas, you automatically created a scene and a camera. But if you wanted to create this with 3JS, you have to create it manually. But as you can see it right here, React 3 Fiber did the heavy lifting for us. 
All right, now within the canvas, we need something to look at. So which is a mesh. Let's just simply say a mesh. All right, now one single mesh can have a geometry and a material. So geometry is defining its shape. For example, like a box or sphere, or in our case later is a cloth. So for example, I'm gonna define a box geometry. And for the material means that what it's made to look like. It can be a color, it can be a texture, and so on. So I'm gonna define a mesh standard material. Now I'm gonna define a color of orange. All right, now let's add this component to our home page. So I'm gonna get rid of this div, and then I'm gonna replace it with test, which is coming from add sign components test. There we go. Now what is it saying? It is saying right now, that we got to use use client. So right at the top, I'm going to say use client. Now you can see the error has gone. I don't know if you can see it or not. There is a 2D rectangle right over there. So as you can see, it is dark right now. And this is where Dre comes in. It's a golden mine of helper function and pre-made objects that saves you a ton of time. So for example, let's add license and controls, which are essentials but tedious to make from the scratch. So let's say environment from react 3 tray and environment gonna take a property of preset and you can actually choose one of the preset right over here this time i'm going to use studio texture all right now you can see the box right over there so let's actually make it even bigger by adding a style of position fixed there we go next i'm going to add the orbit control which is coming from the tray again that allows us to rotate the camera around the object and this is actually happening by using a single component. Dre handles the complex code behind these, so we don't have to. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this, and then let's get rid of these comments. Now this time, I'm gonna define a material of mesh, basic material. Let's also give it a position. The first one, I want to be the left side, so I'm gonna say minus one, zero, zero. And the other one, I wanna be on the right side there we go let's also scale this up so that we can see the differences all right now we've got our box but to make our adidas project look photorealistic we need to talk about one of the most important concepts in 3d lightning and materials especially the differences between the mesh basic material and mesh standard material what i'm going to do next is i'm going to change the lighting for example, I want to convert this studio to night, for example. Now you can see that this rectangle is actually becomes darker. By doing so, mesh standard material reacts dynamically to the lights in our scene. But for mesh basic material, we can see that whether you are changing the environments or lights, it doesn't care about the lights at all. It's just a flat color. It will look exactly the same whether there are 10 lights or no lights. If I remove the lights, for example, you can see that nothing happens. It doesn't care about the lights. So let's return that environment. So what would you ever use mesh basic material? This is where baking comes in. So what is baking? The process of pre-calculating and painting complex lighting and shadows directly onto a texture map. Imagine you have a beautifully lit scene in Blender. The shadows are perfect, the ambient lights is soft. Instead of making the user's computer calculate all that lights in real time, you can bake it. You take a snapshot of that perfect lighting and save it as an image file that gets wrapped around your 3D model. Now you can see I have actually created this cube, which is exactly the same thing with the cube in 3JS. So what if I give this a light? Now you can see the light is actually hitting this corner. Now if I drag that light around, for example, I'm gonna put that light here, you can see that it is dynamically changing its lighting effect. If I bring that closer, you can see that this area is much more brighter than the other side. See, the other side is darker. So what if I want this lighting position? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bake that texture into an image, lighting and shadows and everything into an image. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna copy and paste the Blender cube and its texture right over here. So as you can see, the test folder contains a cube which is coming from the Blender and a baked texture. You can get all of these assets which is gonna be used throughout the project in my GitHub repository, which I put the link down in the description. So let's move on.
So if I click on the bake texture.png, you can see a cross, but it is not a cross. If you pay attention closely, it is a box. Later on, we're gonna use this cube, which is coming from the blender, and wrap this image around that cube, just like a present GIF. So before we do that, you can see that the cube is actually using the GLB extension, which we cannot use it in JSX. So we need to convert this extension into JSX. Let's search for the GLTF to JSX. All right, now let's click on GLTF React 3 Fiber and you just simply drag and drop the file right over here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna copy all of this and inside a component, I'll create a new file. I'm gonna call it cube.tsx. Paste that right over here. First, we need to change the location which is coming from the public test cube.glb. We need to add a test just like so. And then let's change the method name to cube. All right, now let's head back to this cube. All right, now let's get rid of this property. And then we need to define this node because it is not identifying the geometry and the material. So right at the top, I'm gonna to use type GLTF result is equals to an object. So the nodes, as you can see, is using an object with key of string and a value of object 3D. So let's create that. It uses a nodes, which is an object, and its keys are string, and its values, I'm gonna use one of the implementation of object 3D, which is 3.mesh. So we need to import that three from, so import star as three from three. There we go. We need to cast this use GLTF as unknown and as GLTF result. So we don't have the material, so I'm gonna get rid of this material because we are going to add the mesh basic material by ourselves. So I'm gonna get rid of this and let's create a mesh basic material just like before. Now it actually gets a color of orange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this cube into test. So I'm gonna comment this out and then I'm gonna add that cube right over here. All right, now let's change the positioning. I'm gonna set the position back to this one. All right, now as you can see, this is exactly the same thing with the mesh that we have created earlier. But this time we have created this mesh with Blender, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of this cast shadow and receive shadows because we don't need to use it. And using the Blender cube was that to show you guys how big textures work. So React 3 Fiber has a hook which is called use texture, which is going to say, give me a path. So we need to locate a path, which is coming from test slash baked texture.png. And then we're gonna save that texture into a variable is equals to use texture. Now what I'm gonna do next is, I'm gonna get rid of this color because we already have the texture. So I'm gonna say map is equals to that texture. Now you can see everything is actually reversed, not working. We need to do some modification on a texture so that we can get it to work. So we gotta say texture.flip y is equals to false. And then we gotta say texture, texture.color space is equals to three dot srgb color space. There we go. Now you can see that we are actually using this baked texture and wrap that around this box so that we can get this fake lighting and shadows. So if I head back to the test.tsx, if I change the lighting to studio, nothing happens to the mesh basic material, but mesh standard material dynamically reacts to the light. So I have a question for you guys. Which one is more performant? The mesh basic material or the mesh standard material? Obviously the mesh basic material. You can actually get rid of the lights. There we go. That's really all you need to know to get started. It's just simple React, but for 3D. We will see more Dre helpers when we load our 3D Studio models. Now let's go back to our project and start building that Editor Studio for real.